Particularly, I'm interested in getting your reaction to the last thing Mr. Bahur said, that if this support of Israel, and if this, as he put it, driving off the cliff of a two-state solution happens, is to Israel's detriment. How do you explain that? How do you respond to that? I don't think anyone uh, responsible in Israel is pushing for a one-state solution. So I think, uh, I think his concerns are, uh, you know, I, I understand his point, but I don't think there's really a serious political movement in Israel for a one-state solution. And I don't think any of the acts that Israel's taken or we've taken over the past two years is driving us to that point. So, so could I ask you then, I Mr. Guess, Friedman, uh, to, to, to just to state this, it? Okay, I, I understand. Sorry, we've got a delay. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, are you saying that the Trump administration and the Kushner peace plan and, and your involvement in it absolutely still believes and uh, upholds the notion of a two-state solution? Look, when we haven't used that phrase, but it's not because we are trying to drive towards a one-state solution. The issue we have is agreeing in advance to a state, because the word state conjures up with it so many, uh, so many uh, potential uh, issues that we think it's, it does a disservice for us to use that phrase until we can have a complete exposition of all the rights, all the limitations that would go into uh, Palestinian autonomy. We believe in Palestinian autonomy. We believe in Palestinian civilian self-governance. Um, we believe that that autonomy should be extended up until the point where it interferes with Israeli security. And it's a very complicated uh, needle to thread.